In 2007, when the new 96 cubic inch bikes came out, it didn't take riders long to realize that this was one very hot motorcycle. The engine temperatures and the exhaust temperatures were really creating a lot of problems and riders were just complaining left and right to Harley. You can trace the evolution of that back to the 2006 bikes, but they were only an 88 cubic inch, so you didn't see the heat problem. Well, where did the heat problem come from? Well, it seems that Harley added a narrow band O2 sensor to control the air fuel mixture to 14.7. Uh, for you people that like a little bit of science content, you can go out there and check. You'll find that a 14.7 to 1 air fuel mixture is about as hot as you can get. So you end up with the very hot exhaust temperatures and you end up with very hot engine temperatures. So what can be done about it? Well, it seems that you can actually upgrade the narrow band O2 sensor to a wide band O2 sensor. It's a big advantage to a wideband O2 sensor in the fact that it's very accurate from very rich conditions of 10 to 1 down to very lean conditions. Well, we're not really worried about lean. We're worried about trying to richen the motor up. If you check with most performance experts, they'll tell you the ideal temperature for an engine to idle at and for low speed in cruising RPM. It's actually more in the 13.2 to about 13.8 air fuel range. And the wideband O2 sensor is something that can actually bring that to the Harley. So we found a way to marry the wideband O2 technology to Harley's older narrowband technology. We do that through a programmable LC1 wideband O2 controller. So you can actually remove your OEM Harley narrowband O2 sensors. You can install a set of wideband sensors and the associated electronics, wire that into your Harley wiring harness. In this case, you actually just plug it into your Harley wiring harness and you can actually run at any programmable air fuel ratio that you want. We generally choose a 13.2 to 13.5 because this is what experts do and on your older carburetor bikes this is about where that was set. So we can pull the engine temperature down to about the same as it would have been on the older carburetor bikes. This means that your engine is now anywhere from 40 to 100 degrees cooler at the exhaust pipe. And for those people that uh, we're worried about how warm that is. It means that you're now down from 200 degrees. You're getting closer to 120 to 140 degrees, uh, what you feel at your legs off of the heat shield. So that's made a lot of people happy. We're going to tell you a little bit more and show you a little bit more about installing this technology. And we'll take a detailed look at installing it on an FLH. And we'll show you also how you can do it on a soft tail. Our friend Scott just bought his brand new 2008 Road King here for us to do an install. We're going to go ahead and take the kits here for one for the front, one for the rear. We're going to show you how easy it actually is to do this install right now. Included in the package are two wideband O2 sensors, two LC1 wideband O2 sensor controllers, two Harley Davidson wiring harness adapters, and a single add a fuse tap so that you can get your power without having to cut the Harley wiring. I want to take a little time to talk about the LC1 controller itself. Here you've got the connector that actually allows you to connect to the wideband O2 sensor. Here you actually have the body and that actually encloses the electronics that are inside there. Here you've got three cables. The very large cable we have right here is the actual wiring pigtail. This cable can be cut to length to adapt to any bike that you put in. These two additional wires are computer communications cables. This is how you can program the LC1 or you can read the air fuel ratios coming out of this. If you have the pre-programmed LC1s, you will not have to worry about using these unless you want to go in and change your own programming at some time in the future. To get your installation started, you want to remove the seat, your saddlebags, and the two side covers of your bike. Now we want to talk about component placement. What you need to do now is remove the original Harley-Davidson O2 sensor. 
Uh, to start removing your O2 sensor, you want to disconnect the wiring harness of the O2 sensor from the Harley wiring harness. Now that the O2 sensor has been unplugged, you can use your 7 8 open end wrench to remove the O2 sensor itself. Now that you've got your OEM sensor removed, you're going to want to replace it with the new wideband O2 sensor. Now that you have the wideband O2 sensor installed, you're going to want to take the pigtail from it and route it to the left side of the frame and down underneath your engine. For this part of the installation, we want to connect the wiring harness adapter into the original Harley-Davidson wiring harness. This allows the control signals from the LC1 to get routed back into the Harley ECM. Before you mount the LC1 module, you want to install the pigtail from the wideband O2 sensor firmly into the LC1 electronics until you feel it click. Now that you've got your wiring harness adapter installed, it's time to place the LC1 electronics module. It's very convenient to mount this on the left side of your frame right there. We already have one installed in place so you can see where it is, but this will get mounted right up in this location and you will continue running your wiring back toward the rear of the bike. Now that you have the LC1 and your wiring harness adapter in place, you're going to want to pull the wiring along the inside of the right frame rail so you can neatly tie wrap it and pull it up and into the rear triangle frame area. The wiring harness for the LC1 is longer than is required. This is because it's meant to fit multiple bikes. In this particular FLH, you can coil up the wires and it will mount inside the rear frame triangle neatly so you do not have to make any cuts. Now we're going to move along the installation of the rear O2 sensor. Just like the front sensor, you're going to want to make sure that you disconnect it from the wiring harness first before you remove the O2 sensor. Now that you've got your rear O2 sensor installed, you're going to route the wiring down and you're going to run it into the rear side of the frame like we've done here. You don't want to forget to install the wiring harness adapter into the wiring harness. Now that you've got your rear O2 sensor wiring and into the rear triangle, you want to make sure that you connect it into the LC1 electronics before you mount the LC1 electronics in the rear frame triangle as we've done right here. Now that you've pulled all your wiring into your frame area, you're going to go ahead and start doing all the connections here. You're actually going to have two sets of this wiring, one for the front, one for the rear. In this case, we're just going to simplify it and show you one cylinder at a time. So our preferred way of connecting is using crimp connectors. This is a relatively simple tool that you can pick up at any hardware store. We're going to go through the wiring here fairly quickly, but there will be a more detailed explanation in the installation instructions. You have a red power lead. You've got a blue primary ground wire. You've got a white ground wire for the electronics. The black wire actually allows you to connect in a status LED. The yellow wire is actually the signal wire that will talk to the Harley ECM. It will be connected into your wiring harness adapter. The brown wire is unused at this point, but it is a secondary output for your wideband O2 sensor. On your O2 wiring harness adapter, your blue wire is the signal wire. Again, it will connect into the yellow wire from the LC1. The gray wire is a ground and gets connected to the chassis. To get power to your LC1s, we've chosen to use a fuse tap that actually adds an extra fused circuit to your OEM fuse panel. This makes for a very, very neat and clean installation. To get power to the LC1, you need to make sure that you're on a fused circuit that comes on when you turn your ignition on. In this particular case, we've chosen the headlight fuse because when that comes on you can get active power right there. In the fuse panel, if in doubt, you can always look at the diagram that comes with the Harley and you can see which is actually your headlamp fuse. In this particular case, all we've done is we installed a red fuse just to make it a little easier to see where it's going in. 
you pull out the original fuse and you plug in your fuse tap. And then you can install your fuses. And now you actually have one brand new circuit there. On soft tail models, the LC1 for the front cylinder is in the same approximate location on the right frame rail. For the rear, you'll find out that it's mounted just behind the frame, right in there behind the oil tank. Well, Scott, we got the units installed on your bike, and you've had a chance to ride it, and you've had a chance to experience changes in the engine heat and in the way that the bike responds now. What do you think so far? Well, Steve, I'm very impressed. Uh, I put it through a lot of tests out there, and I couldn't get anything to complain about. It's very responsive. Six gear down to 40 and get on it. It's all there. Uh, I really can't wait to take it out to a bike fest like Leesburg or something to see what it's like in that heavy traffic and see what the heat issues, how much better that is because there is really, really hot from the factory. Yeah, and we're, we're looking for some real nice changes there. You know, it's uh, big engines, uh, 100 cubic inches sitting there between your legs are going to be warm, but we've done everything in the world we can to pull that temperature down as much as reasonable. So well, we sure want to hear from you when you I, get back. I thank you, and you'll definitely hear more from me. Here we can actually see the difference between what the Harley thinks it's doing and what's actually happening in the air fuel mixture. The air fuel mixture, as the Harley thinks it, is about 14.6, 14.7. That's exactly the way it was designed to. If you look at the front cylinder here, you can actually see the real fuel air fuel mixture is settling right around the 13.2 range. Vibra the back and forth is a very normal situation. That's actually the way that the O2 sensor is intended to work. You can see exactly the same thing on the rear cylinder here. Again, 14.7. The yellow indicator over here is spending most of its time in the 13.2 range. So this shows that the wideband O2 sensors are indeed controlling the Harley ECM to the air fuel mixture that you actually want it to be controlled to.